The university is a place which professes to teach whatever has to be taught in any department of human knowledge. And it embraces in its scope the loftiest subjects of human thought and the richest fields of human inquiry. Nothing is too vast, nothing too subtle, nothing too distant, nothing too discursive, nothing too exact to engage its attention. John Henry Newman's The Idea of a University. It is often said that a university, its faculty and students, exist as an enclave within our larger society, an ivory tower detached from what many people call the real world. Or to put it another way, the university is the home of theory, and the marketplace is where theory is put into practice or if inconvenient, uh, simply forgotten. Certainly the activity of acquiring a disciplined and abundant intellectual life can best take place in an atmosphere removed from the usual pressures of daily living. In this regard, our campus is a setting carefully designed by the men and women who founded and developed SMU to create the best possible circumstances in which learning might take place. But we know that learning is empty unless ultimately it is related to living. Therefore, the knowledge gained, whether a valyric poem, a chemical equation, or from unmasking the mysteries of accounting, is not an abstract feature of an undergraduate education, but rather an experience intended to be an illumination of personal and professional possibilities in life. In its efforts to educate the whole person, SMU is the intersection of diverse strands of thought and experience. How could it be otherwise if the university community is to involve itself with issues lying at the living heart of the human experience? Consequently, we at SMU not only acknowledge the existence of controversial issues, we welcome their exploration in order to better prepare our students for their futures. John Stuart Mill once wrote, There must be discussion to show how experience is to be interpreted. Wrong opinions and practices gradually yield to fact and argument. But facts and arguments to produce any effect on the mind must be brought before it. An important part of your orientation to SMU is to begin to feel at ease with the kind of intellectual discourse described by Mill. As a way of introducing you to the life of facts and argument, we have chosen as this year's orientation theme, 1984 toward the 21st century. The book that immediately suggests itself as an illumination of our theme is of course George Orwell's 1984, which I know many of you have read. Orwell's famous work is a masterpiece of warning, which unforgettably dramatized for the post-World War II generation what might happen if we allow ourselves to become alienated from the institutions of power and from each other. Perhaps the culminating horror of Orwell's vision is of a world in which words, the links which connect each of us and which establish who and what we are, come to have any meaning which authority gives them. Today, having arrived at 1984, we can look past Orwell's book toward a future which can, if we choose, appear even more grim than it did to him when he wrote 30 years ago. Our future is one awkwardly balanced on the edge of a nuclear holocaust, one in which the abundance of this planet continues to be unjustly divided between the rich nations and the poor nations one in which all too conspicuous are the unending evidences of man's inhumanity to his fellow human beings. But our future is not a simple ordination of fate, far from it. It is as fragile, as tentative, as mutable as our hopes and dreams. At the same time, as strong and enduring as the qualities of compassion, intelligent self-interest, adaptability, and optimism which reside in each of us. As we look toward the 21st century, it is your decision and my decision as to whether we will become the shapers of our future or its victims. To help you begin thinking about the future that the freshman class of 1984 will soon be helping to make, we have chosen a provocative and stimulating book, Nesbitt's Megatrends, for you to read and to discuss. 
It is meant to help us see more clearly the broad outlines of the future. Naisbitt speaks of a society heading toward virtual scientific and technological illiteracy. As our existence becomes increasingly sophisticated technologically, the temptation will be to educate young men and women with more and more narrow specialist skills. It is a temptation that must be resisted, he argues. The specialist is becoming an anachronism and the generalist a necessity. It will be the broadly educated men and women who will decide on and take advantage of the shape of things to come. The shape of things to come, as Nesbitt sees it, is dazzling with opportunity and promise. Nesbitt's book cannot be read with an uncritical eye, but it provides a starting point for thinking about the world that is to come. So we stand here with the challenges of change and questioning affecting every aspect of our society and ourselves, from the workplace to the home place, in our inner and outer space. Orientation week will be a time for reflection. In November, however, will come a time for decision when we take our next step to the 21st century.